The objective of this project is to demonstrate the use of gates and Lodestar's ability to branch. We'll assess someone's basic knowledge using a set of flashcards. The gate will repeat the missed flashcards until they're all answered correctly. So given the recent events in the Ukraine, we'll use that as our subject. We'll begin with the activity maker template. I'll double click and title the project Ukraine. Lodestar will now make a folder with that title and place all the necessary files in that folder and that folder will, will appear under projects under Lodestar. Now let's go ahead and put in some content. We'll style the content. The Ukrainian challenge. I'll make the heading one. I'll change the typeface to Arial. And then I think I'll boost up this size as well. I'll choose 14 point for the text. And then I'll insert an image. I'll choose, and the, and the way I did that, I'll just point that out again. Uh, this is my web editor, and in the web editor there is an insert image. I'll now get image. Lodestar remembers your image folder, so wherever you accessed image in the past, that's where Lodestar will go to at first. I'll choose Lviv. Lviv is Lviv is a uh, major city in the western part of the Ukraine. And you can see here it is automatically scaled this down to 180 by 240, but you can override that. I think that'll be fine for our purposes. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice the image, this image was aligned left. If I wanted to change any of the properties of that image, I could go back into the image editor. Notice that I have not selected the image, so I, I missed the image. In order to uh, get the properties of the image, you can use this pull down. So now I have that. It's left aligned. Normally, by default, it's actually aligned none. So if you want this effect where the image is on the left and the text wraps around it, you need to choose that. And then I'll, I think I'll choose a border size here. I'll select border, give it a color, and make it a solid border. So just placed a little bit of a border around this image. Good. So we have one page with the text layout. It has our instructions on it. I could choose to give this page a uh, page ID. This is helpful for branching. I could say introduction. It also helps with the table of contents over here. So We'll see that in a second. In this case, I don't have any embedded questions, so this is this is not relevant. Point value, not relevant. Remove from flow, not relevant in this case. And I don't want to have any audio related to this page. So we're good. Let's add a page. Hit the plus sign. That'll give me another page with text layout. But in this case, I'm going to have a gate. And the purpose of the gate, uh, I'll have essentially two gates. The purpose of this gate will be 
uh, kind of a starting point. I'll, if there are, are missed items, I'll branch to this starting point. So I'll choose the little arrow button. Now I'll look for gate. I do want to allow the next button. So notice when you add a gate, everything is shut off by default. No back button, no next button, so I do want next. And in this case, allow student to pass regardless of score. I'll put zero here. So what I'm doing is I'm ensuring that we move forward from this gate to the next. For branching, I'll just say go to next page. Now all of your branching options are here and we'll discuss this in greater detail. So no matter what, I'm going to go to the next page when I hit this gate. And I'll call this um, the start. So later when we're branching to this gate, uh, I'll know what gate I want to branch to. So essentially we're setting up a gate. It's going to be our starting point and I know this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense yet. We'll add some flashcards then we'll add another gate. If if the flashcards are um, any of them are missed we'll be cycling back to this point and, and then this will cause us to move forward into the flashcards. We'll see that in action in a minute. Let's go ahead and add a page. Of course by default we get a gate but we'll choose flashcard. There we go. And our first question will be related to the Ukrainian borders, so we'll bring up a map. Bring that in. So I'll say something like the Ukraine shares the longest part of its border with what country? This is easy because you're able to essentially look at the map, but the answer is Russia. And what I had done previously is provide some instructions. I pasted them in, which said you need to uh, capitalize proper nouns. But let's say you didn't want to. Uh, let's say you, you really would allow both lowercase or uppercase. Then I need a, a regular expression. So I'll choose that and I'll add a square bracket, capital R, lowercase r, square bracket. So this is a regular expression. This will be, uh, and, and that's kind of a trickier Trickier, trickier thing to learn the business of regular expressions which here is symbolized by reg x. It's much easier just to simply provide instructions for your students to capitalize and then if they get it wrong it's, it's due to a capital. I'll give this a point value of 1 and I don't need to worry about any of the other items. So, ready to move on. Here's our second flashcard. And in this one, what is the peninsula that juts into the Black Sea? This has been in the news. Let's call it Crimea. Now, someone might say Crimean. And again, we could use a reg X to allow for that. So we could um, put in a period which symbolizes any character. And here we're adding an asterisk, which means any number of characters. So that allows someone to type in Crimea or Crimean. Again, a one point value.
here's the right answer that gets displayed to the student. So this is always what gets evaluated by the computer. This is always what the student will see. Let's add another flashcard. And we could obviously have many flashcards. We'll make this our last one. And this will relate to the religion of Ukraine. What is the largest religion in the Ukraine? And the answer is Eastern Orthodox. We'll leave it at that, but again, we could uh, make allowances with regular expression. And give this a point value. Now we're ready to, to judge whether or not all of the flashcards were answered correctly. Select the plus to add a page. We'll change the page layout type to a gate. Here we're going to continue to allow the next button and pass if the score is a hundred percent and we'll use percentage here. Let's come back to this page. We need to add one more page to branch two if indeed the threshold threshold was crossed if a student answered a hundred percent. Add a page that gives us yet another gate and we'll change this to text. I'll just call this part two just to symbolize that we're moving on and let's go ahead and this is really critical we need to provide a page ID so we know where to branch to. I'll go ahead and set that as heading one. Now let's go back. We'll use our back button to go back to the gate. Now for the pass options, I'll choose the branching. So if you've passed, we're going to jump to a page. Which page? jump to part two and I can even give some feedback congrats moving on and I'll display that feedback for two seconds but still branch immediately so essentially feedback will be shown for two seconds and then we'll move to part two that's what that means. For the failing, if I if a student didn't meet 100%, then essentially what we want to do is jump to page, and there's our start. We're essentially cycling back to the starting, and we don't need to show feedback. They'll simply see the first flashcard that they missed. We're good. Let's go ahead and preview it. So I'll click on the preview button. Now the flashcards will come up very, very slowly in preview, but for the student, they appear quickly. And here we go. There's the Ukrainian challenge all styled correctly. I'll go to the next page. Now my next page was a gate, but it immediately went forward to the first flashcard. And I'll go ahead and answer this one correctly. The largest Ukraine shares the longest part of its border with Russia. And again, here's where, this is what I meant, the flashcard just moves very, very slowly, but it won't for the student. We got that right. And then uh, we go ahead and type in Crimea and the last question I'm going to get wrong purposefully. So there we go. We're good. And this one I'm going to answer incorrectly. So we'll see Eastern Orthodox. Now when we go forward, it hits that gate 
and it immediately shows us the card that we missed. I'll choose Eastern Orthodox. This time I've got it right and when I move on I should be branched to part two. Here we go. Congrats. Moving on. Displace for two seconds. Part two. So that's our preview. We had an introductory page. We then had a gate and our gate was set to allow next button and to have students pass no matter what and the branching of the gate was set to go to the next page. We then had three flashcards. Our first had a regular expression. Our second used a regular expression, but again that's not necessary. Our third did not. And then we had a gate. If the student scored 100% or better, we branched to part two. If not, we cycled them back to the first gate, which was labeled start. And that concludes our tutorial on the use of gates.